Nancy, yeah, she hop. And she pop, and she blow Dominicans with all. If God didn't put her hand, she would kill more Dominicans. When she blow, Maria blow, mama look flooding Dominicans. Why, oh, yo, yo, yeah, when I fly in all over. Why, yeah, yeah, Maria put you in Venusa. Why, oh, yo, yo, Maria, who say all so good. When Hurricane Maria plunged Dominica into total darkness on the night of September 18, 2017 and lashed our vulnerable nation with ferocious winds in excess of 200 miles per hour, its savage intensity left a trail of death and destruction which resulted in 31 persons killed, 34 others missing and millions of dollars in property damage. In the space of eight horrendous hours, thousands of Dominicans were made homeless and a total of 9,960 landslides were triggered across the country. Roaring winds, which sounded like runaway trains, threw roofing galvanized around like demented kites and appeared to howl with vengeance and rage. Some persons swear that these winds seemed to be talking. When the dust settled, literally, about 90% of the national building stock was severely damaged and the sight of hundreds of roofless houses, together with mountains, hills and trees, stripped bare of their usual greenery, were common sights in the aftermath of this catastrophic natural disaster. But can you imagine what this nightmare scenario must have been like for persons who are totally or partially blind, wheelchair users, persons with restricted mobility, and those with other types of disabilities? Let's take a trip across Dominica to talk with some of our members to find out what the experience of Monster Hurricane Maria was for them. Wandi Coco Regis, Victoria Delis. Well, first of all, I was not at my residential place. I went to a, a, a neighborhood around 4 30 in the afternoon. And from since the winds started growing up, piece by piece. As you know, I am completely blind. So I can just say of my hearing. Um, I had the experience of four windows got broken and one sliding door. No injuries in the area that I was. Different um, stages where the, you could hear the water itself on the concrete. Galvanized, moving up and down. There are certain times we could, we could, we could hear like a vehicle blowing its horn. Sometimes we, we, we heard the, the, the voice of a, a, an animal like a pig. And that's basically about it. At the beginning, um, I, I thought I was partly okay. Because somebody who is sighted at 1.30 in the morning told me that my roof was there. So like I was in, almost in a comfort zone. But when, I, when we raised at, at, at mo in the morning, it was completely done. So it was a different feeling at that time. I think some, something um, quicker should have been done especially to the visually impaired people, you know? Because my personal experience, uh, I have been suffering with pressure for over 15, 16 days. And I know there are weaker um, blind fellas than me, so I can feel what they're going through. So I think the, the, the process needs to be speeded up. My name is Mildred Barry. I am the adopted okay. mother of Fanny and Frederick who is my neighbor. I am um, very much concerned about him. During the hurricane season, um, we took him to the shelter early in the afternoon, but his house got broken down, everything. He lost everything. He lost every, everything. His fridge, his, his TV, his mattress, his bed, everything gone because the house fell flat down. At the end, when they went to the school, I asked, um, seeing that his house was flat down, nowhere to go, nobody concerned about him. So none of the family never worried about him. So I asked um, one of my friends, 
if he could have come and build the house for me, he told me no problem. But I didn't really have all the money to give him, so I gave him something anyway. I gave him a little change and then in two days he built up Fenian house. The last day the house was not even really finished. They brought Fenian down. God bless Tina Alexander, she had given him a bed. And then they brought down his bed from the school. And then he, he, he's in his house right now. Although the house is not completed yet, no partition, nothing. But he is there, he's dry. So I am still taking care of him. What I have, I send him for him. But right now, he need a... Um, he need a... Um, what I could call that? Total care. Because you know, he's bedridden. The, yes, we have the, um, the yes we care, of course, that is doing much for him. But seeing that he cannot do nothing for himself, we need a 24 hours person to be there every day with him. Because there are some boys who come in there, the person who used to stay there with him no longer stay there with him anymore. And then there are some boys who's coming to do little thing for him, but they are not, they are not his, um, you know, not his really his people to wash, to bathe him every day, because he has to use his catheter to empty the bag and to cook his stove. Well, um, right now he has no cylinder. They have to burn wood, because I think um, Petrocar did not have gas when we sent for it. They said they did not have, so I don't know if they get now. So the boys have to light wood to cook food for him and so on. I know um, everybody needs help now, but I think they should give more attention to this type of people there. Because remember, they cannot cook, they cannot wash, they cannot do nothing for himself. And he's only getting 150 per month, which that is not enough for him to, to live on. He has to provide his own food and everything. And somebody that can take care of him 24 hours a day, they should give them a little more attention. I am Tad Richardson Laronde and I live in Laplin. And as you can see where I live, there is a total disgrace. Well, I'm partially impaired. As you see that my sight is not that perfect. I am close-sighted. Nothing to me really happened to me. Um, it's just that the wind came the wrong time. And it came, in service, it came in the day, it came in the night. And um, it didn't really threaten me because I have really, in my younger age, I had passed um, little hurricanes, but not to say, like, how this one comes, how this one came. I was at my home in the morning, and they said that it was going to strike in Dominica, on the east coast, in the eastern coast of Dominica. But I didn't really believe that it would strike. I didn't want it to leave my home and go anywhere. And I said, well... Instead of I stay there and something happen, I rather leave and go to another shelter. And it came for the day, the whole day. I didn't sort of see anything until about 5 p.m. in the afternoon. There is where the disaster strikes, and it goes on. And until 8 o'clock, there is where the, the really harmful stuff goes on. Well, my house now it is mashed up, just that you can see that the wall. Is actually standing, but the wooden structure actually gone down flat. The government need to look forward for the people that is disabled and to really give a helping hand and to look out for them to see what if they are really in need and if they are in good, perfect condition. I'm sure enjoy it from my regret. And this was my business place at Melvin Hall. I've been an amputee for about seven years. Well, before I had a restaurant and a, like a nightclub, a bar, and restaurants, and so we used to have um, activities like um, dances. That's where I live my living. So some people do really they have restaurants and on weekends. That's the spot. So. Well, when we came here, as you can see, completely destroyed the building. The only part that is up is that the um, dwelling area where I used to live. But the bar is, the restaurant is gone. The bar is gone. The, the complete building has been destroyed by uh, the Hurricane Maria. Now I'm unemployed. With, I'm trying to obey, but it's not easy. I would like to whatever assistance I can receive from the government in that in means of my rebuilding because 
That's the only form of employment I had, and it's completely destroyed, and I have no other means. And I cannot go out to see where I can go somewhere to look for, because I'm happy to, the way you're going to employ me in Dominica, they will just say you cannot work, but I personally know I can do my work. I would like the least to, come to um, continue and to get some assistance from the government in means of building back. I am Rose Ogis of the Kalinago Territory. I'm physically challenged. During the hurricane, I went to the shelter that was at the Batical Nazarene Church. Well, during the storm, I really was wondering what's going to happen because even while we were at the shelter, the wind started blowing, rain started falling. After time, we sat here in front them. Then the windows went, the doors went. We were at the downstairs and the upper part went. And from them, we started hearing the wind blowing so hard. And then even while we were in the downstairs, the whole place was shaking and there were 25 of us we all went into a small room and we closed up ourselves there and we stayed there until the, everything was over that night but even while i was there i was thinking of my family back home because my mother my stepfather my son they was at home and knowing the condition of our home i was very concerned that the night after the hurricane, the, the early in the morning, I left the shelter along with a cousin of mine. And when I reached home, I did not even meet my family home because the doors went, the windows went, the roof went, and the place was in a mess. Our kitchen, we had an outside kitchen. The kitchen broke down. Our stove mashed up our fridge. And... Uh, the place was just in a mess. Well, the only thing that we got was my stepfather got something from um, UNICEF. It was 240. Apart from that, we haven't got any assistance. At the time, we got some gun vendors for the roofing, but we still cannot um, put any gun vendors on right now because the posts on them, they, all the posts, they break, some of them sheath, the rafters, all the gone. It's only my son who pick up some pieces and try to cover up how he could and put up some things just to wrap the dust so he could sleep in there. So nobody's sleeping there now. It's basically just, um, we're waiting to get it fixed properly. Yes, I would just like to encourage the government and even the able bodies out there to really do the best that they can to assist us as people with disability because we are people just as themselves. What is your name? <laughs> Sharon Benjamin. Where do you live? <laughs> she lives in Wesley. During Hurricane Maria, where were you? <laughs> So you were in the house sleeping. You and who? You alone. Yeah. What time? When everything finish? Okay. About seven. About seven o'clock. Light had gone. And then she saw people with flashlight. And she frightened. Peeping through the hole. Yes. And then, yeah. She don't know what was going on because she does not, she cannot hear properly. So rain falling, she take it for normal. And then when she start to hear the wind, 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 she look for a little hole. And then she see the people with the flashlight and she start to feel afraid. After 9, 10, yes, more wind and 
she don't know what to do. It was dark with wind and then three persons. Yes. And then she see galvanized flying from the house next side. Mash up the shop, mash up. And she see people with flashlight. And then people Yes. She was afraid people come in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next morning, she about six o'clock. Yes. People come, open, she watch to see what's going on. And then she comes with the umbrella with her pants. One day, yes. And then her boyfriend come and help. Her boyfriend didn't sleep with her. But when he come, she feel better. All on the porch was water. Water come all inside there. Plenty people, plenty people. She see everywhere mash up. Yes, and his when boyfriend come, she was happy. And he helped her. The kitchen and the wooden parts, everything mash up. And the toilet and bathroom window came out. And she alone, alone living in the house. Everybody passed up and down and nobody never really come in to ask her any question. Even the family, they were tight lip about it. They didn't even come. Are you getting rash and relief? You're getting a lot of relief. Uh, uh. Friends, yes. Yes, they're giving her. Uh, and the neighbor, yes. But not family, they're not nice. What did you get from DAPD? DAPD? D A P D. DAPD. Did they help you? What did they give you? What? 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 Uh, food, baked beans. Sausage. Yes. Uh huh. Clothes. She get clothes. And food. Yes, plenty. Where else you get food from? Wesley, the, the neighbor, the neighbor give her food and she get from the cops. People go for it for her and bring it for her. She get really from the council. My name is Warner Alfred from Marigot. Well, uh, how it came, Maria? I was at home, I left here, went down by my cousin. So we, did, we both together. So I see there, he kneeling up. So I come out and ask him what he doing. He say, well, I, I kneeling up a window there. I say, take it easy, you know. My make window knock you down. So I go back and lay down. I was on a double bed. I underneath. I say, I lay down there. I hear wind passing, man, he's galvanized on his mother house flying. But not done him to us yet. So I say there, he ain't, do, do. He's come and make a noise on his house and then he come back and then go, 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 go. Then he go back to the sea and he come and like he tug in the house, man. He come back, he go back again. When he come, I just hear, boom! Everything gone, man. My eyes full dust. See him cover me down under the double bed. Piece of wood cover it on my right shoulder. So I see there, he called me and said, Chief, come so, boy. You right? I say, yeah. He said, well, you have to move. You know. Come so, come so. When I go in the drawing room, it's more missile flying, man. I dive under the table, man. So he, he, he looking for his stick. He don't get it. He get a broom. And he said, let's go. Come out under the table. We have to seek for shelter. And when we move, man, it's wind, man, and rain. When you there, he tell me I'm moving too fast. Stop. 
but don't know if the, the light he tried to see, get because the place is so dark. So then he said, come across man, and you move man, and you stand up. They wouldn't have two of us can move. But just there, in the center, and all the in is and we just there. At some time he take me, pitch me man. Or he say, holy move, hold. I roll out. And he come again. We there. It's rocking man, he say, hold man. And he's going down, I don't, I don't come back in my foot, I just stamp it in the dirt, man. So when he reach, and he did wait light again, he run to the side house. And when he reach there, man, wait, man. And he looking for the key to open the door, and all I'm saying, you haven't find the key yet? No, and he went beating me on the wall, man. All I say, you open it? No, yet. and he went beating me on the wall. And when he open when I fly inside, when I fall in a bass of water, BAP! Because the dunk says I'm sticking water. And when he come in, he fall in that man. And now, next thing is to close the door. And two of us there, we can't close the door. And we're fighting. And when he do close the door, I say, you lock. He say, you don't reach yet. And when he reach, man. I say, lock. He lock. Then he say, you want to open the door? I said, get a nail man and throw on top. And he threw the nail man on top of the door. He framed. Yeah, hear that wind go down to the sea talking all kind of language. He talk, he go like a lion, he go like all kind of horn, he pass back. That pass and he make a noise go man. He just speaking all kind of language man, all kind of thing man. He talk like a lion, he talk like, well, all kind of on. So then I say, I got hurt, you know. He said, true. Anything, man. Get bruised by my side head, it swell up big. He went, so I just had my rubbing alcohol in my bag, I just take it out and rub up. And that was it, man. And we stayed there for days, man. Wet clothes, man. And the inside there, man. It was horrible. It was a time to remember, man. <laughs> this one was a okay, David. <laughs> it was a monster. Yeah. Okay, we know, like what? Almost like five months past, over the past five months uh -huh. after the hurricane. What have you received any assistance? To well, not really. With the trampoline. Mm -hmm. and, and well, assistance in terms of one relief supplies and no. building materials or whatever. No, I haven't got building materials. But the, the, the trampoline, I didn't get because when they send the chairman, the chairman come to visit me and he go around the house. So when he went down the road, my auntie stopped him because she could stay and see around the house. She stopped him. And then she, she asked him if they visit Warner or his trampoline and so. He said, I'm not qualified for trampoline. Why? Did he say why? He tell her she, I'm not qualified for trampoline. And I don't know. You see, too much mango branch around the house. But we used to change some cut down the mango branch on them. And so you can see, you go behind there. You could see how we pack it up the burn. So I don't know why he didn't want to give me. And he don't give me up now. Yeah. I go and check my pressure, my sugar, everything. Okay, so you're getting some medical assistance? Yeah, my medication. Okay. I go by the hospital, the health center. The doctor treat me good and so the nurses. Alright. I get my medication there. Well you need some shelter with disability. I don't know if they can move fast on that. Because we need homes, you know. As you can see my home where you live in you're not mine but where you live in a, in my shop. So I'm homeless, huh? As you can see, you know so? I'm homeless brother. So I need assistance quick. To Get a little place, get a nice little apartment, you know. Because I'm totally needed that. My name is Scotilda White from Point Michelle. And my disability is I wheelchair bomb. I was in my house in Green Valley. So when the wind started to blow strong, 
by 11 o'clock so my whole house was already fold and I was in my bathroom in my toilet my bathroom and my toilet together so is there I take all the hurricane the wind rain wind mud and everything and my orong close to my house is a big ravine is around there all those people died in Point Michel around my area in Green Valley is there where all those people died in Green Valley so I was with my my two grandchild and four and four of us so the the bathroom door the bathroom door come out the wind take it the roof of the bathroom come out so we are just here taking wind rain mud everything yeah so that it was a great disaster for us we self thinking that we would have died too would have perished too because the way the wind want to lift lift me up but i had hold the sink the sink um under the sink is the eye hole and those others hold the um the pipe the iron for the pipe the shower yeah the others all and the wind want to lift lift us up because we all um we everything gone so the roof and everything the door so only the three walls inside the three walls we were yes i was scared because i thought it's we alone that that remain to die because the way the wind had us i thought it's we alone that remain to die well when they break i check in where we is i thought it's somewhere else over see i check in that is not the same place i have my house where we are so it's somebody that tell us it's the same place you are the green valley i say green valley and the place was strange and then after they bring me in the shelter and it's there i am since then Yo. yes the government um assisting to build back my house well they they put all the surrounding of the block already the roof they haven't got the material to for the roof yet so i hope that it will happen very soon for us to come out in the shelter i am mavis bellard from sofia i just let me see i have arthritis with what other arthritis in my knees my hands okay. and then my waist i was at my home and i took the whole 17 the 17 of it was the 17 for the 18th. I took it at my home, going to the toilet, the little uh, stress going to the toilet. I sat down on the chair, you see, I'm right now. That lady, you see, I have a fat and ready, she was, she's at my back. And her little boy was just in front of me. And we sat down there for the whole night. Oh. And I took the hurricane. The house went out, I did, I did not know. Where I am right now was a shop. No, 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 the shop gone. There's no roof on the shop. I say, I am in a street. I am not getting up. We sat down there for the whole night. Rain started wetting us. And I remember I have a shower curtain. I don't know, I'm going to take a shower curtain and over it, put it over you. Let us spread it over us. They went for it. And he spread it over us. That was the only part I got to it was my two shoulders. Because she was standing above me. And then uh, start they start praying. The rain start falling. And then they start wetting me. When it was around three o'clock, they heard a voice. 
They start shouting. I tell them, I don't shout. God is good. We will overcome it. Nothing will happen to us yet. Sticks fall there. Blocks fall there. That in front of all of us. Nothing happened to us. Not a scratch. We got. And I am a diabetic. And I have to be very careful. Nothing happened to us. When it was four o'clock, she went as usual to open the door. Could she could not pass. She could open the door. She came back. I but be careful. I don't go into the to, to the east. The reason the door fall. I say, God is love. We are all safe. Then I heard. She said, Hey, I see came back and then look down them there. We very well. If they come and get me, no problem. They came, they came to, when they came in, they could not open the door. So, so right, right away now, one of them came in. How big we can do the then pass now? The then say, I will make I said, I am not troublesome, I just want to give it to me, I have to take it. Then she, the boy gave the door one kick. Open the door, and then two of them came. He said, "Well, one told me, go on my back, and I'll carry one in me. If my weight, I will not go on your back. You have got the strength to bring me out." Then I said, "Well, I will. If you will hold me under under my shoulder, I will walk." Then they did that, and I came from the, my room, and I walked to the veranda. When I met the veranda, no, I see a veranda gone. I said, Sophia, no, no, no figures. But yeah, I started laughing. They say, hey, you see all who are crying. Saying that something happened to them. And I looked at them, they are laughing. But what do I do? Cry then, praise God of my life. They said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You going down in the shelter or you going at my mother's home? But well, she's with me and the boy's with me. I'll go to the shelter. I said, well, how are you going to the shelter? Whenever well, I have a small wheelchair. I don't know if there's a wheelchair in the only. So they went for the wheelchair. They took the wheelchair and they put it for me. I say, people, be careful when they go that step there with me. Anyway, they held me, they lift up the wheelchair and we went down and then they brought me down to the, shel to the shelter. When I went to the shelter now, I met everybody there. So I said, good morning. It was around five o'clock. And I went in there. I stayed there at the shelter until the time I say, well, I see everybody moving. That one doing that one for that one, that one. I say, Papa, but they, if I have to live there, <coughs> you will do something for me. I said, you said there for the whole thing. And I said, everybody start moving. I said, I want to move to me. Then my stepson came to me and told me, they went to the house, but nothing can be done now with us. First of all, Michelle came to me and told me, Madam, why he kiss off another Kaisa, no? Shall I say, I do well, whatever it is we do, I will accept it. Then I said, if it's so, I said, I call my cousin from Scotland, a carpenter. So I tell him, come and help me. I mean, his house went through. He nearly go to, I would not even get him to. But anyway, he came. We have a little bed. That is a bomb bed they made for me down there because I could not use those cots. So I use it and then up to now. And we're still happy little by little. I got uh, food. It's not food I'm missing. But those kind of food I can go with them. But as they say, praise God, I'm alive, fully alive. And with no scratch up to that present day. I thank Jesus. God is great. He's mighty. He's wonderful. I will still get help. By the grace of God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, my recommendation is only for the, those who are suffering more, and especially the elderly. Those who can do nothing for themselves. Because at least, I, will, I might have somebody, but the person doesn't take care of me. That one might have somebody, and the person doesn't take care. But there are people down who are interested. Whether you have or not, they will take care of you. Well, my name is Rudy Grove. And I'm a totally blind person as a B1. I live at Sofia. When it was about probably minutes to six, so when I, the heavy rain and the wind really started doing, I'd leave and I go down below my neighbor. 
that's where I spent all the nights. Yeah, I mean, although it was in a way the um, damage because all the roof, the roofs have come out and because it's like a disco episode, disco is covered with galvanage. Well, I mean, I was there alone, and the way I was feeling, I was just saying to myself, well, you know, as they they had um, announced that the disaster, the hurricane, and they took took people to put in shelter, and I say, well, see me now, right now, nobody didn't care for me, and I had to ask my neighbor if I he could let me go in his downstairs, and you know, I was there alone, and to hear any kind of noise, the song, and the heavy rain, and the place and cover. You know, and I was there alone all during the night, and you know, I was just saying to myself, "Boy, it's not stopping, man. That hurricane not stopping." You know, I never really to say was scared, but I was just feeling alone. You know, I alone, and I was feeling I didn't have a company with me like I could to talk. You know. Well, during the next day, like when people start moving up and down, and then some people come and look for me because they saw my house break. So when they came to the downstairs, they call on me, so they saw me there and. They, they tell me, well, my house break and things. So I came there, but it was raining. I came, I take my sick, I come and see what I, what I can, how I can touch and how I can, what I could feel. But I feel the whole place was, the whole house was down. So I just had to go back the same area, although it was worse. And then my neighbor there come and she took me, tell me, come and come by her. And I spent some time at her home. But I feel to myself I wasn't comfortable sleeping on the chair. So I came back there and I start to clean and I end up trying to saw wrong that thing. But by there now, we do really thing is just the block holding it there and certain thing. And I just try to do something to rest myself. No, I just be there. Sometimes when I want to cook, I do my little cooking. But when the rain, I cannot stay there because the whole place is wetting, all inside wetting. Although I put one, two gambas and the plywood, but all the water falling back inside. Because as I'm not seeing what I'm doing, you know, it do come out in a way good. Yeah. No, well, no building supply, but the time, like the, the ration, you know, they was giving little ration, little food, but after they stop after a while, it's a while, it's a while now since they stop. Okay. Yeah, I was getting one, two ration, even from DAPD, they gave me two tarpaulin and some a box with um, some dish and things in it I could use. Well, village council never come to me. They never come and check me. It's only I talk to the I ask the, I talk to the parish, to the prime minister, and he tell me that they talk to the parish so they will build a house for me. But then a couple of weeks back, a guy come and do some estimation. But I never really get no deep information really to let me feel comfortable well look such on time such time things would happen. Yeah I looking for because really and truly I, I, I kind of frustrated in a little way because of I don't really have a home here to rest myself. Good because even if I to take in the rest when they have when I still wet in, still wet in a little so I look comfortable. If the time of the hurricane they had like they was passing and you know, take certain people bring in shelter. But you know, because of the way people have me around, some people have their own like for them it's tricks I have I can see and so they have me on a on a low level. To me I would say like I'm not important for them. So nobody really come and look for me the time of the shelter. So I had to ask my neighbor to go below his his his, his downstairs. So that is where I was and up to now that is where I be. A lot of times I already listen to really the Prime Minister speak. To me, well, his, his aim is more on elderly and young people. So, but, I mean, I'm a young person also, but to people with disability, I find in, they don't really have much a time for them and care about them. Because I find in, in the village, in my village also, people don't really take it because they have me like, I am not important, I'm, I have nothing. But have, that is why I have to try my best to do everything I can. So I mean, like I, I what I the most important thing I really feel in I want is is a shelter and a home. So that is what I really more looking out. My name is Relda Richards. I live here at Wall House. My disability is spinal stenosis. It has affected my legs, so 
I have a problem with my leg and walking and so. So I use this to help me get along. Well, my Maria experience, <laughs> I don't even know. That was the longest night of my life. The night of horror, I call it. Real horror. And I never ever want to experience another one. I did experience Hurricane David, but it was not like that at all. Maria was something that just came to take everybody away. And I bet if it was during the day, more lives would have been lost. Because people would be diving for cover <laughs> as it is daylight. But we weathered it out. We started getting rain and wind from probably after 6, 7 o'clock like that. And then I was much surprised when the kitchen started to flood. I couldn't believe, you know, what was happening. Rain coming. And then Tinsha come to me, Auntie, the room getting wet. I said, the room getting wet. By the time I left there and I went to the room, water was coming from everywhere in the house you could think of. From the roof, rafters, everything was water, water and sand, and thing I couldn't understand what was going on. Then we started moving things. We had the baby, because the baby was newborn at the time. Move the baby from there, put the baby in a chair just by the face basin. <laughs> the next thing, everywhere there was getting wet, so we had to move the baby again to the bedroom, to my room. When I went inside there, all my room was getting wet. And then we just started hearing all kind of rack attack, rack attack, rack attack, rack attack. Then I realized things was getting really serious. So we had to I had bake some bread and cake for those children. I say we would have it first to eat. I don't know where that passed. The next morning we meet it in, in Maria's story outside there. <laughs> we didn't have time to eat anything. We had that night, that window, the kitchen window. The kitchen window was rattling. So I had a little ramp in front there. I just tried to bring it from inside. And I took the ramp and I put it across the window, trying to hold on the window. And it telling me, you hold in window? Keep on holding window and you will see. And I hold in the window and I hear in, Jesus have mercy. Jesus save us. Jesus have mercy. Jesus save us. <laughs> and the was screaming, Auntie, leave that. Come, come, come. Auntie, come, Auntie, come. They were all screaming and I, I just let go the window and I move away. As soon as I let go the window and I move away, I just hear bash out, crack out, crack out, everything. Window cave in, it fell, thing break and then when I left there, I just came and I opened the two windows on the porch. Those two windows, I opened them wide so that the wind could go about its business. And I went in the room and we went in the room, we closed the door. And we stayed inside there. And while we were inside there, we heard all kinds of things happening outside. Then we heard something on the house, like an explosion. I didn't know what it was. It's a few days after I realized it was the solar water heater that fell on the house and broke the rafters. We stayed inside there. We put the baby inside of the wardrobe on a shelf. So he was very comfortable. And then the other children, we put two of them in the cupboard that cupboard, two of them in the other cupboard and the mother and I sat down, we sat down on, on top of a little cupboard in the room but water, water rained my bed, I couldn't stay on the bed because the bed was pure water, we had to put buckets we had two pails there, we had to put it on the bed to collect the water it was just flowing like when you open a pipe man water, I never see water like that, water, water water and we stay there, we Heard like when every sheet of galvanized <laughs> came out from the house, from the house flying, and then after when I guess maybe there was no other galvanized. So yeah, you start we start hearing the neighbors over there. We heard that word over there, and then we were trying to peep out in the window there to see what was happening outside because the wind was coming like this way. It came from the sea going so, so we started looking out, <coughs> but. We couldn't see anything. Everything was pitch dark. You couldn't see nothing. Darkness. And then we stayed inside there. The children wanted to sleep. They were crying and we were trying to comfort them and tell them, you know, like, it's a hurricane and it's high wind. 
and they have to we have to try to keep them safe so just stay where you are and enjoy the little the little comfort we give them biscuits and so they're little sweet so they stay there that one say no i want to sleep you tell them try to sleep where you are sit down there and sleep so they stay there they doze on one another doze on one another but and then we were trying to communicate on the phone with some cousins we had in king's hill they tell us we put the we put the we had to put down the fridge to bury the door because the door was coming out the roof had gone upstairs and the people upstairs came downstairs so they had to put their their fridge down and they had a baby they have a baby too and they put the boy they, they tell me he they had to put him in the couch so they call again they keep calling asking what happening what happening i am nafali murphy and i am totally blind um on the day of hurricane maria my husband and i who is also blind were alone and uh, we were following the advisories and listening to the reports and of course i've always heard that whenever a hurricane is coming you should try to find in your home a place of safety and make sure it is away from glass windows and glass doors so i took the opportunity during the day to do just that i went into that bedroom here and i took one of the mattresses and i placed it here and um i said well okay if push comes to shove we will have a little area to at least to shelter the system and weather the storm not realizing that it was going to be so strong so when the reports came or the breaking news came it reached us around quarter to eight but before that too i had already secured all my documents all my clothing all my shoes all my bags so i made sure i packed them in plastic bags and put them in a place and area where I thought that they would be okay. So we waited and when the news came that it had reached category five in our bedroom over there where I was, I just picked up my phone, I picked up my radio and I head for that area there. I headed for that area there. My husband was down in the living room and he was coming up to say something to tell me something about some sheets that are placed under the the door to keep the water away and by the when it when it landed on the platform there all i heard was glass being shattered from below so that was when he now is trying to find his way to get under the shelter so i'm saying to him i'm shouting to him i said come come he said where are you where are you i said look me come <laughs> so, and he eventually came and tried to get under the under the, the table and we stayed there by the time we got there the next within a minute within a matter of minutes we could feel water coming down under us and then we stayed there from about eight o'clock um september 18th to about four o'clock September 19th with just one short break between 10 and 10 30 I think when the eye was passing I got up and went into the bedroom to check what had happened in that area I discovered that the water was coming in but the windows were shut and they were intact and the bed was dry so I said to him well we have an area there you know that we can move over to um, when the storm ends but it took, as I said, it took hours before we could have, we could have done that. And um, we stayed there. At one point, I heard a sort of heavy song. I said to him, is that thunder? He said, no, I think it's the roof that's gone. <laughs> you know? And then we stayed there. I could hear, I mean, you're totally blind. Two blind people in the house. You cannot see what's happening. You can only hear. You hear in the wind whistling. You hear in the rains coming down in torrents. You hear it all banging, all things hitting across uh, 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 on the house, all over the place. So you stayed there. We stayed there. But I must say that I never really felt scared because I had gone through Hurricane Marie, um, David 
1979. So we were even there, we were even making jokes and laughing. One time he said to me, I want to use, I want to use the, the bathroom, I want to pass my urine. I said, well, do it in the water. <laughs> So, so we stayed there and for hours, every minute you feel you want to pass your urine. Every minute you want to pass your urine. Anyway, we stayed there. When, it, when, it was, I, when we thought it was over, after four, I got up. I went back to check what had happened to that area again. I found it was still intact. I went in that room. It was still intact with just a little uh, broken glass in the window. So I said, well, we will stay there. I said, we are going to stay there until someone comes to our rescue. And I said, if I know my neighbor, Nico Coppel, I think the earliest opportunity that he gets, he will come to look for us. And then we stayed there, not knowing what is happening. Because we do not want to move because we know the whole house is in a mess. We do not want to get, go out there and get injured. So we just had to wait when somebody with sight came along so that we could know what had happened. So we did that. I used my radio, transistor radio, tried to, you know, see if I could get some news out there. The radio, all radio stations were down. Eventually, I got onto Voice of Nevis, and then I heard the news, what the Prime Minister had reported, that the entire country was devastated, and even he himself had lost his roof as well. So we, we stayed there, we stayed there. So I said, after it, when it was, I said, wow, nobody's coming. Nobody's coming yet, somebody must come. But I realized that the roads were blocked everywhere, you know. There's no way people could, could come quicker than they did. So when it was around 8.30, I heard someone say, well, they call me Nafo, and they call my husband T-Boy. Person said, Nafo, T-Boy, where are you all? Jump up, and it, it was our neighbor, you know, the same Coppel. I say, where are you all? Because you know, he, the, the, the way he called, you can see he's coming in fear because probably believing that we were dead, you know? So when he heard our voice, he said, oh, oh. And then he came, and when he came, he said, he came there, we came out, we stood up there, and he started telling us all what had happened to Kenfield East, so describing to us, you know, whose homes had, had gone down completely, whose roofs were gone. So we asked him, well, what is the situation if our our own. So he said, well, your roof is gone, your roof in the whole long area is gone, and all your equipment is on the, on the floor, and so on. So he, what we had to do was to make, help him, make him help us to find our way to see exactly how we could get down to the area, the living room, kitchen area, because we really wanted to, not to get injured, and that um, he did that, he helped us, and then I felt I, was, I wanted to drink some coffee, so I asked him if his wife could make some coffee for, for me. He said yes, so he took the coffee. Because we had all our supplies as well. Eh? We, had our, we had all our water, I had water stored, I had food stuff, I had everything, you know, that would, I know that would, I would need for at least two to three days. And what we had lasted, lasted about a week. So uh, um, on the, I think the 24th of September, our stepson, or my stepson, Michael's son, came down from Florida to have us evacuated. And he, I will tell you something. As a blind person, as a person with a, uh, living with a disability, I know that many persons with disabilities prefer to remain in the comfort zone of their homes. Yeah? And I'm not sure whether my husband would have agreed to move to a shelter if somebody had come and said to us, let us go to a shelter. Because being blind, it can be very difficult, you know, to move around, to help have, have people assist you. What I have been thinking of moving forward when you're dealing with, and I, I don't want to be specific to blind people, when you're dealing with persons with disabilities, I've always heard it said that, um, you have to have a place of safety. People like to remain in their homes and whatever, whatever. What I would recommend is whatever the place or wherever the place of safety is, we have to ensure that it is accessible, that it is safe, that the people can remain where they are. Because being in a shelter, I'm sure, I have never been there, I am sure for someone who is blind, it's gonna be difficult. And of course, ensuring that you have somebody with sight with you, you know? So in 
my estimation when I listen to how shelters, people shelter, the experience of people in shelters, I think as they continue to say build back better and be resilient, the place of safety wherever it is in your home should be a place that you have everything available for you, as I said, accessible, so you will know where you to find wherever and whatever you want in your home. So if a person is there with you who is sighted, if other parts of the room, for instance, they say if you have a concrete room, you have, uh, you, you have your everything built and designed to withstand, to withstand um, hurricanes, then you, you'll be familiar with that already. So if the other parts of your home were to get damaged and you have decided person there, if that person would be then be the guy to, you know, to help you move around and get along. Well, that is my daughter, Charlene Charles from Pinit Savan. And her dis disability is she unable to walk like you and die how we walk in and she uses pumpers and stuff like that. But and sometimes her speech. But as the as the time goes by, she the speech is getting better. Well, during Hurricane Maria, around after seven, we saw things changing, but we did not take that um, deeply. We thought it's something light. Everybody in Dominica, a lot of us take it very light, you know. And so, we, we, some, some of us goes in and watching the TV and whatever, watching how the hurricane doing and stuff. But when we see things getting hot, windy and stuff, we say we cannot stay upstairs. We have to go down, downstairs and meet the landlord. So we got on that is like a dusty wind was high already and that is where we sheltered in the downstairs with the landlord. But we did not know what was happening upstairs because it's night time. We could only hear the crushing pe people say they could hear the wind talking but I don't mean I could hear the wind talking. But people said they had different, it had different, Maria had different language but I don't know. So while we were downstairs, I mean the only thing we could do is just you know, brace ourselves and ask God for his guidance because that is something we always do in, in our daily life. So I was praying that I don't know what happened around Dominica. I'll say, God, only you know, and it is in your hands. So just protect lives. And though we, we had, we, we, some lives passed away, it's so sad. Just like Erica when he was pit seven, a lot of our family friends lose their life and then Maria came, took some lives again. And you know, the next, mo the next morning when we went up, I f we know, I tell my husband, I don't know if my roof gone because I have my stuff upstairs because anyway, when did they break, when they break after six, he came, he, he went up, up outside, he told me he can see part of the roof when he went upstairs. It was just in a mess. The only thing I could do, I just call on God, just give me the strength. My, children, my child, my son, his stationery, his books, all that got wet. My child, um, laptop got wet also. Um, the printer is outside, not good anymore. My TV, not good. I lose a lot of things. So as you see, the roof of the kitchen went. All my kitchen materials just go like it's like it's hard to it. No, it went with that. I don't but never never mind. I have life. God give it to me, he can give it to me back again. He will give it to me back. And when he give it to me, I know he's going to give, give it to me greater and better now. Because uh, as a songwriter say, our tomorrow must be greater than today, and I believe that. So we are in the same thing, but first of all, we have a, I have a landlord. She's I call her mama because she's very nice and encouraging and strong woman of faith. You call that. And she enc encourages me. My brethren also, we are worshipping. And can feel they encourage me very much. And I am their brother. Even though sometimes it's still strike. But we have to hold on. Sometimes you, f you feel like life cannot go on, but life will go on. As step by step, as the days go by, we, we, will, we will go on there. But during the rain, rain time now, when it's raining, I'm, I'm a bit sad, you know, but God has to send his rain. But when you see it have sunshine, I'm very happy because I have to keep on scooping water, sweeping water. But anyway, in the midst of that, we have to be thankful, you know, we have to be thankful always. So I pray that, you know, God, he will put that shelter over my head and he's the one that feeding me. So I got help and then the help we got is from the ADP. She's the member of the ADP. I am, I am thankful for them a lot. 
and for my um my committee at PT7, we they should give us um a pass. So I'm thankful for that. But I need now is I need um pampas during night time. That is what she does is. So I need pampas for that she can sleep, you know, as I'm warm and comfortable. But above all, let us and as I will say I am blessed because I am not dead i am alive i pass erica i pass maria i even though if i have another one i will be able to stand it because i know the god i am serving and he is true and i that song will say i am blessed i am blessed as i look around me i realize i'm blessed because i have shown my feet I have clothes on me, I have food on the table, and I have no door. How it is, God is still sheltering me. I say, thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> From these traumatic testimonies, it is clear that many persons with disabilities in Dominica went through a terrifying time during the passage of Hurricane Maria. Nevertheless, the winds and waters of this killer hurricane taught our nation a number of critical lessons, including how this particular segment of the population should be treated before and after a major natural disaster. Among the important issues which Hurricane Maria highlighted in this regard are the following. Persons with disabilities should prepare personal disaster plans relating to their specific situation. Relevant authorities should prepare special programs for responding to the needs of persons with disabilities during periods of disaster. Persons with disabilities wishing to do so should be taken to appropriate shelters or places of safety well in advance of a disaster. Emergency shelters should be accessible and appropriate to the needs and requirements of persons with disabilities and priority attention should be given to persons with disabilities after disaster since they are among the most vulnerable. We do hope that the authorities around the island, especially the Ministry of Social Services, the Office of Disaster Management, Village Councils, the Red Cross and voluntary groups take note of these issues and implement appropriate measures in the future especially during the upcoming hurricane season. However, in addition to the foregoing, Executive Director of the DAPD, Mrs. Natalie Murphy, has some further thoughts on the subject of persons with disabilities and natural disasters. I have to say that um, DAPD is supportive of government's vision and thrust towards making Dominica the first climate resilient country in the world and their build back better concept. However, we would like to see that they implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities when doing so, and in particular, Article 9, which addresses accessibility. And accessibility in that regard relates to access, access to the physical environment, to public buildings, to roads, bridges, transportation, information and communication technology, and of course, alternate means of communication where you cater to the needs of persons with speech and hearing impairments and those who are visually impaired. We would also like them to consider the universal and inclusive design concept. And this is a design for products, environments, services, programs that are usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for adaptation or specialized designs. Now, both accessibility, Article 9, and universal and inclusive designs are in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. 
we also are prepared to collaborate and partner with them in this regard since we believe that the needs of persons with disabilities must be taken on board in these endeavors. And since we are an international organization, or part of an international organization that subscribes to the motto, nothing about us without us, we stand ready and available to work with the powers that be in our vision to create and build a new Dominica. In conclusion, we wish to thank the government of Dominica for inviting the DAPD to address the recently held Post Maria National Consultation on February 19, 2018. During her address at this event, the DAPD President Mrs. Irma Joseph referred to some of the earlier respondents and reiterated some of the issues listed previously. So we are saying the next time that we have in a national consultation or anything national, please take us into consideration. Let's get it right the first time so we don't have to think of fixing anything. I also heard Mr. Blackmore alluding to safe, affordable, comfortable, but I did not hear accessible. And when I, I look at um, the designs and I do not see anything looking like there is any access for wheelchair users. So it simply say, or I should say, we are not considered, or maybe not, we are, but they will not look at it to make some of the homes accessible for persons with disabilities. I hope so. Article 11 speaks about the whole situation of risk and human humanitarian emergencies. And just as I said, we are doing this filming, and there is this one of the examples. Somebody was saying, go back to the old days how we used to do things. And there is this member of ours with speech and hearing impaired. She cannot hear, so she was not informed that the hurricane was coming. And she lives alone. And when it was whatever time in the night, someone broke, well, they broke her window to come in to see if she was okay. And she was scared. And she did not know that all this, there was a hurricane or anything, she went to sleep as normal. And they are saying there that they can read. So whatever way that we can inform village councillors, ensure that the disabled, the elderly, and the children are well taken care of before any disaster. It's not only about hurricane, and hurricane gives us time. So as village councillors, you have enough time to ensure that these persons, we talk about vulnerability, we are the most vulnerable in this society. So please look out for us. And as we say, DAPD stands, and we are available to be part of any national reconstruction, PM, Mr. Prime Minister, let there be involvement. Nothing about us without us is our motto, and we are saying, involve us in nation building. Thank you. Human disability is not inability. What I lack in mobility, I make up with creativity. So my limitations should not be a reason for discrimination against my person cause I too am human got wonderful creation though I may be blind still I am watching though I may be deaf believe me I'm listening though I may be dumb you bet I'm shouting Shouting for my rights, my equal rights Cause I too am human, that's why I fight Not asking for empathy Not looking for sympathy Give me what is due to me Respect and equal opportunity Fighting for my rights, my equal rights Fighting for my rights Basic human rights Fighting for my rights My equal rights, my God-given rights